Hello. Hey, hey, what's up, Sam? Hey, how's it going? Hold on one second. Let me uh, get my video up here. Okay. It's, it's going good, man. How about you? I'm good. Hey, Sam. Hey, what's up, Roger? Thanks so much for taking some time to um, uh, meet with me and speak to us. We really appreciate it. You really are doing it graciously, and we appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Like I said, I'm glad y'all are, are you know, working on this stuff. It's certainly relevant and, and needed. Okay. Yeah. Has, has, uh, have you done a lot of video conferencing since the uh, pandemic set in? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, more, more than normal. Or yeah, more, more than I have historically, that's for sure. Yeah, I haven't actually haven't done Zoom that much. We've done this thing. It's like a global, global meetup. It's kind of oh. similar to Zoom, a little bit clunkier, but it's um, okay. Well, Zoom, Zoom right. seems really streamlined. Okay, well, um, oh, uh, well, let's jump right in. I want to ask you just a couple background questions, especially for the uh, students who might be watching um, at home. Can you tell us just a little bit about who you are and and how you landed in this line of work? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and hi to all the Fairmount Temple students. Uh, excited to kind of meet y'all through, through this presentation and, and excited to actually engage with y'all in dialogue uh, in the future. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yes, a little bit about me. I, um, you know, my, my experience, life experience is really rooted in kind of the west side of Cleveland, um, a little uh, in, in Lakewood, and then also in it, Atlanta, Georgia is, is where I was born. Um, you know, growing up uh, in, in Lakewood, some things, you know, my, my dad was a postal service worker, uh, so he was delivering letters, um, but I would just note that, you know, that was a, it was a stable job, it was a union job, and myself, my sister, and my mother, we always had stability, in, in large part because of that, you know, having a quality job my father had that, that was unionized. Um, I wasn't as conscious of that growing up, but I became more aware of it as I got older, how important that was, how relevant it was to, to who I am. Um, and then I, I do want to note um, my, my mother, uh, Bonnie Sykes, she's very in, influential on me um, for, for a few reasons. One, she's, um, she's very uh, dignified and very strong. Um, and some of the ways that she demonstrated this was um, when I was growing up, she advocated to get funding um, for a playground at my elementary school. Um, at the time, there was a fairly large scale corporate development that was happening close to the school. And what she advocated for was that some of that funding go to construct a new playground for the youth and the students and also the community around the school. And she, she was able to achieve that. She did it through you know, talking with other parents and other students and, and pushing the school board and city council to, to, to deliver that. Um, and then one other example uh, of my mother is she did organizing around um, creating a, a basketball team for middle school youth. She wanted to make sure that uh, middle schoolers had access to quality basketball, basketball programming. And so again, she organized and advocated to get funding um, for middle school teams uh, in, in Lakewood. And again, at the time, I wasn't as conscious of what all that meant, but you know, as I reflect back on it, um, I think my mother's efforts to create change, to address issues that were relevant to, to people definitely had a huge influence on me. Um, and then just a little bit about myself. Um, I, got, I got involved with, um, with organizing first at Ohio University. I was a student there and I was involved um, with students and also with the, the workers union on campus. What we did there, we, we organized and advocated to keep tuition more affordable and also to try to reduce the the kind of um, income disparities on campus. We wanted campus workers to have kind of more fair pay and better working conditions, and to also raise questions about some of the higher salaries that, that did exist on campus and trying to even those out a little bit. Um, and as we did that, we, we built coalitions with the campus workers union. Um, so students would help to support them when they advocated for higher wages, and then campus workers would help um, and advocate for affordability issues, particularly for working class students. Um, and so that experience really kind of opened my eyes to how you can organize and how you can put pressure and, and build coalitions too, to, to address issues. Um, 
from there, I, I wow. moved down. Yeah, I uh, moved down to uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And that's where I got uh, much more involved in, in public health work. I did a, a master's degree in public health and, and I would, you know, suggest public health as a, as a career field and, and happy to talk with any students that might, you know, be interested in that and want to dig in more if they have to talk about that. Um, but also I, I was very involved in Atlanta with union organizing. So particularly um, campus food service workers. So certainly a food justice issue in this case, it was largely African-American um, food service workers. And oftentimes they have low wages and they'd have a lot of stress in their lives that, that was related to, to simply, you know, working very hard, but, but, but making very low wages. And so it was difficult to have stability in, in the home and, and buy quality products for your family and, and all of that. Um, but so we organized unions on campuses. Um, we also worked to fight against evictions. At that time, it was 2008, 2009, and Atlanta had been hit very hard by the foreclosure crisis. Um, and again, with this, it was, it was very racialized in the city of Atlanta, where African-American communities were hit disproportionately um, with foreclosure issues. And so we organized to put pressure on banks, as well as local and state level um, politicians to try to stop evictions and to try to get lenders to renegotiate the loans rather than, you know, putting um, residents out on, on, out on the street. Right. And um, yeah, yeah, so then, you know, from there, I, I moved back up to, to Cleveland. I'm on the west side of, of Cleveland over on West 104th Street. Um, it's a beautiful neighborhood. I'm right across the street from a, a public elementary school here, um, Louisa May Alcott. Um, and I work at the health department. I've, I've been working at the county health department for about four years. Um, but I would say a lot of my experience that I just spoke to you all about really informs how I approach public health. Where I think fundamentally um, we're going to achieve better health when, when there's more justice, more fairness, more equity. Um, and I think grocery stores and their um, distribution, as well as the quality of working conditions at those stores, are really fundamental to, to public health. Wow. Well, you're, you're hitting on all of our kind of key issues of our third prism. As succinctly as possible, what does food justice mean to you? Food justice. Um, yeah, food justice means to me that um, people, families can have uh, access to quality and affordable food that they want to eat. Um, food justice means that, you know, the, the workers who provide those essential services, and I think we're all seeing, particularly among, you know, amidst this pandemic, that these are truly essential workers, um, that those workers are paid a decent wage. And so that those families who are, who are stocking the shelves um, can also, you know, achieve food justice for their family. Um, I think certainly the supply chain is, is critical too. A lot of times that you know, we'll get into issues around fairness, around immigration and respecting undocumented workers who are working in the fields to, to pick the tomatoes that, you know, get to our grocery stores that, that we actually buy. And so trying to be thoughtful uh, along the whole food chain, um, that workers along the food chain are, are respected and, and treated well. Um, so I think, yeah, that's food justice. I, I think, you know, certainly, um, uh, you know, people being closer to the earth and closer to their food, understanding where it comes from and, and valuing it. I think all that falls under the, the food justice uh, umbrella. Wow, yeah, fantastic. And just to kind of segue into, I think, what you're, you've prepared a really interesting uh, uh, a few slides about, could you tell us a little bit, we covered this a tiny bit, but could you tell us a little bit about what a food desert is? Yes, so, so a food desert, uh, it really involves uh, two components. There's two key components. One is that there is, there's less access um, to a, a full-scale grocery store. So as in like in, in your neighborhood, is there a full-service grocery store or is there not? Um, but then two, the other key piece is that we're really focused on lower income communities. So in order to be you know, considered a food desert, um, you have to not have access to a full service grocery store in, in your community. And then also you're, you're more of a lower income community. And, and why that lower income piece I think is very important is that if, if you are more middle class or, or more affluent, um, some of the stressors around getting to a grocery store and the general economic stressors that working class families face, that's, um, that's not felt as intensely in more affluent communities as it is in working class communities in, in Cleveland and also in the inner ring suburbs. Can I press you to help maybe the students visualize this a little bit more clearly? 
if your nearest store is a Dollar Tree or a Family Dollar, what are your food options when you walk into that store? Yeah, so I think mm, it depends a little bit on, on the Family Dollar. Like some of them might have, you know, a little bit better options than others. But I would say generally the, the dollar stores, the different variations of them, they're offering just, just lower quality and, and kind of hyper cheap um, uh, food options. So if you're, you're really, if, if those are your main options for food, you're, you're not gonna, it's gonna be very difficult to achieve a healthy and sustainable diet. Um, and then in addition to that, on, on the workers' rights angle, you know, a lot of times these stores are not unionized um, and the workers are making very low wages themselves, which is in part how they keep the, the prices so low. So again, low prices are nice, but you know, oftentimes that, that can really hurt the people who are, who are working there and you know, their ability to achieve stability. Okay, great. Well, um, do you wanna do you wanna talk a little bit bit about the organizing that you did in um, Euclid and Buckeye? Do you wanna try to uh, share your screen so that we can see some of the really interesting photographs and maps that you have organized? Do you want me to try to share the screen? What's, what's yeah? Your Let's see. Let, uh, let me give it a try, Sam. I gotta I gotta learn this thing too here. So you I'm gonna try it. to share my screen. Let's see, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. What? <laughs> All right, well, then I'll try. Hold on one second. Cool. And about, about how many students are in the, the class, Sam? Um, 25, about 25. Okay. Oh, well. I can't, I can't share my screen either. Um, do you want to, we can, we can kind of distribute the, um, we can distribute the material with it. Unfortunately, I'm not, I don't have the keys to the, to the account in this form. Yeah. Do you want to talk through like maybe a couple of the key ideas or the, or the key maps or the key uh, efforts that you did and then uh, students can kind of follow along at their leisure. Yes. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Or, or I mean, I could always kind of, is this uh, how's that? Oh, wow. Yeah, look at you. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'm just thinking, yeah, because the presentation is kind of long. I'm just going to try to hit on, maybe hit on some of the main, backwards. I'm going to hit on some of the main points. Yeah. Supermarkets and community organizing and, and racial justice and economic justice and all those beautiful things. Um, yeah, and, and so yeah, that, that map that you have, you know, that, that just helps to give a snapshot of food deserts in Cuyahoga County. Um, so yeah, this is a map of Cuyahoga County. You know, in the center you have the city of Cleveland, and then you know you can see the inner ring suburbs and the outer ring suburbs. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, let's see, Beechwood is in there, right over near Shaker Heights, kind of on the east side, inner ring there. Um, but what the map shows is all of the dots on the map represent um, a larger scale grocery store, usually a store that's at least 10,000 square feet. That doesn't mean that it's quality or not. It's just saying that there's a grocery store that, that's fairly sizable. And then the green area around those dots, those represent areas that, that we're saying, you know, generally have uh, somewhat better food access simply because they're in close proximity uh, to the store. And then the orange areas those are the areas that you know, we as a health department, and then also, you know, I'd say county government and your, your city council people and, and residents, you know, should maybe um, have a look at or, or maybe have some concern about in, in asking, hey, you know, do residents in this area have, have access to quality and affordable food? Because the orange areas mean that one, um, it's, it's lower income communities, and also they are somewhat farther away from, uh, from a full size grocery store. And so that's just, yeah, just kind of a snapshot to give folks a sense of, of the scale of Cuyahoga County and also, you know, where we're at. Um, and then I'll just say from a public health perspective, it helps us to kind of zone in and really be more evidence-based when we're trying to address food deserts. Just out of curiosity, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but out of the 1.25 million people who live in Cuyahoga County, do you have any idea what percent or proportion live in a food desert? Yeah, so, you know, I, I would just say keeping it somewhat, um, somewhat rough, I would say about 
25, about 25% of those folks could arguably be in, in a food desert. Um, and, and the way that we, we try to be more, more inclusive with that, so we say particularly in urban areas that um, anywhere that's more than half a mile from a grocery store um, is something that, we, that we'd wanna look at. And, and, why, and some people might say that, oh, half a mile is not that far. But what we would say is that, you know, if, if you're looking you know, at folks, at, at seniors, um, or for folks without a vehicle, um, even, even that half mile can, can be a challenge um, for, for residents. So that's why we do try to yeah, make, make the case that anything farther than half a mile, it, it can be challenging for residents. Um, and then, yeah, what, what we have here, this is just, this is again a map of Cuyahoga County. Um, and the, the areas like in kind of darker blue, are where there's higher rates of deaths, so mortality, from chronic diseases. And so we looked at um, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. And so you can, you can kind of see that the food desert map from before, if you, if you overlay this map on it, you could, you could kind of see that they're somewhat similar. Um, and so, yeah, it makes the case that, hey, if you have better access to quality food, that can be helpful in terms of uh, preventing some of these chronic diseases. Um, supermarkets aren't going to solve all of that, but they, they are a piece of that puzzle. Um, and I think some of the governments and uh, social justice organizations should certainly be looking at. Um, what are some highlights? Do you want to talk about um, uh, Euclid or, or one of the examples maybe? Yeah, let's see. I, I, so I'm going to try to think of just, just an overview. So, you know, one, I would say that, you know, for, for some communities in, in Cuyahoga County, um, having a quality grocery store in, in your neighborhood, it, it's a really, it's, it's a very deep issue. It's something that really hits people in the gut. Um, because, and, and, and we've certainly seen that over the past three or four years in Cuyahoga County. Um, I'll bring up an example that happened uh, really in early, let's see, in early 2018. Believe it was was when um, uh, Giant Eagle they they announced that they're going to close two of their two of their larger locations in Cleveland. They're going to close um, one store over in the Buckeye neighborhood of Cleveland, over on the east side, and then they're also going to close a uh, location on the west side at West 140th and, and Lorraine. Um, and so when those closures were announced, it um, it really caused a lot of um, distress, you know, in the neighborhood. And yeah, here's so here's an example of it. Yeah, sorry, I may just scroll down a little, you know, quite a bit there. That's okay. Um, but so in, in both instances, you had an east side neighborhood that was somewhat in crisis as a result, or, or very distressed at the at the closure of the store, and then also on the west side as well. So really, in in some ways, there is um, kind of opportunities for unity because you had different communities that were facing a similar struggle. Um, and so this, the, the image that you see here, this was over at the West Side location at West 140th and Lorraine. Um, and, at, and this is a rally where, and there's about um, 180 to maybe 200 folks that, that came out to this rally. And so residents were trying to raise awareness to, to city and county leadership, you know, around their concerns here. And they were also trying to put pressure on Giant Eagle to see if they could get Giant Eagle to stay or uh, perhaps to bring in a different grocer, you know, to, to fill this void as, as they left. Um, and I would note that the, um, these residents who were involved, they were, they were conscious of kind of the food justice spectrum. You know, some residents were there because they, they wanted quality food in their neighborhood. Others, you know, maybe their main issue was that uh, a pharmacy was closing. In both of these giant eagles, they, there was a pharmacy. And so particularly for senior residents, you know, access to that pharmacy was very important. And then also I would just note that these giant eagles, they had unionized workforces. So these were union jobs and they're pretty large employers in these neighborhoods. So some of the residents here, they're also standing in solidarity with the workers trying to make sure that they could keep their jobs or if, if they were laid off that the, the company and the union would try to find them jobs uh, at, at other locations. Um, but going back to my initial point, just the, the turnout here, you know, having over 200 residents come out to this event, and over on the east side, there were similar events. They had large forums, you know, with hundreds of residents attending. This really demonstrates that, hey, this issue matters. You know, you know working families, you know, working dad, working mom, you know, they, they, they don't, they don't, they're not going to come out to something unless it really matters to them. Um, and so I do just stress that, hey, you know, access to, to grocery stores and food deserts, it, it really matters to the greater Cleveland um, community. So, yeah, and so uh, kind of going from this, I would say, 
what we've seen in Cuyahoga County in a, in a few cases is um, residents trying to address these issues. Um, and so in, in this example, these residents came out and they're looking for solutions. You know, they want a grocery store, they want their city leadership to act. Um, and so our, our county health department, we've been involved with this and really trying to help to organize residents and um, make some of these concerns and, and kind of struggles into, into solutions and, and trying to channel that energy into something. Um, so, what, so I think Buckeye, the, the, the story in Buckeye is a, is a relatively, has a relatively nice solution. Do you want to give us an update on what happened with this giant eagle on, on Buckeye? Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so over on Buckeye, again, a lot of residents, um, they, they wanted solutions, you know, to, to the, the, their giant eagle, kind of their anchor grocery store leaving. Um, and so the, through that kind of resident advocacy, the, the city of Cleveland ended up uh, providing a, a, a loan, um, a loan and a grant that would try to help bring a grocer into that neighborhood. And then in addition, there's a statewide funding program called the Healthy Food for Ohio program. And they, they provided loans as well to help bring a grocer in. And so um, Simon Supermarket uh, came, came into the neighborhood um, and that was the same supermarket that had also come into Euclid, Ohio. And we had worked in Euclid as well on this issue. But I would just note that, um, so government action in this situation certainly helped to bring a private grocer into, um, into the neighborhood to, to address a, a food desert um, need. I will, I will note that um, partic particularly in Buckeye, that there, there have been challenges you know, around the, the grocery store. Um, some of those being that you, know, you have a, a majority African-American neighborhood. And then in this case, um, there's a, a Pakistani store owner that, that is, that's managing the store and owns the store. Um, and so that, and I would just note kind of building kind of racial justice, racial understanding, um, and building unity, uh, that, that can be challenging sometimes. And so I would say that after the store has been implemented, residents have been organizing to communicate to the store owners, like the expectations that they have around quality, um, and also, you know, how, how they want to be respected as a community, you know, that is really frequenting their store and helping to stabilize the store. So that, I, I'll be, you know, upfront that, that there are challenges there, but I think also, um, because of the organizing of residents, that, that there's really opportunities to build unity and to help to stabilize a quality store in, in Buckeye. Okay, and, and um, well, it's really nice to hear a little bit of a, of a success story. I can just add in um, that closure was during my first year at my current school, and there were a number of students um, who I spoke with and whose parents, this was on their mind and they were shuffling through their head, where, where am I gonna go? Where, where am I gonna find food? We, this was back, I think, in 2016 um, when Giant Eagle was closing as well. So I can just say from personal experience that I heard students and their families say, what am I gonna do now? And I really heard that anxiety. So I am glad that, that um, a grocer did fill that void a little bit. Absolutely. And can you tell us a little bit about, before I, I, I let you go, can, can you tell us a little bit about what's the organizing that's going on in East Cleveland? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in, in, the, in the city of East Cleveland, and I'm sure students have a sense, but just to be clear, you know, East Cleveland, it's its own municipality. So it's not a neighborhood in Cleveland, it's its own city. And so functionally, that means that East Cleveland, they have their own mayor. They have their own city council, you know, their own municipal tax base. Uh, so just to be uh, clear, kind of clear on that. Um, so one of the strengths in the city of East Cleveland is that they have a very strong community organization called NOAA. That stands for the Northeast Ohio Alliance for Hope. And so that it's a it's a resident led community organization where they it's they come Jewish together. Ah, uh, hey, hey. Um, and uh, so, so, you know, basically residents come together and they use their, their power in numbers to really address quality of life solutions in, in their neighborhoods. And so, you know, from me coming from a county level a health department, having an organization that's strong and can win strategic campaigns and is also really led democratically by residents is very important. And it can really help um, our, our efforts to, to work to bring a quality grocery store into the city of East Cleveland. 
So NOAA has really led for the past two years a campaign, one, to really understand what residents want in East Cleveland, what type of grocery store they want. Well, I, the first question was, hey, the folks want a grocery store. That's where they started. And I would say democratically, residents spoke very clearly um, and said, yes, we, they want a grocery store, a quality one in their city. And so for about the past two years, NOAA has led a very strong campaign um, to, to figure out a way to bring a grocery store into the city of East Cleveland. Uh, we have worked in coalition with them. So myself at the County Health Department has supported NOAA and also kind of brought lessons from what we learned in Buckeye, what we learned in Euclid um, to, you know, to this work. So NOAA, for example, they collected over 2,000 petition signatures and they delivered those to um, Cuyahoga County Council. So, you know, the government for, for Cuyahoga County. Um, NOAA held a forum with, with over 300 residents. We can show a picture of that later, but um, 300 residents came out to a forum where residents shared their stories about challenging, challenges, getting access to grocery, but also, you know, folks who have diabetes and like how important it is for them to get a quality grocery store. Um, but part of the strategy though, was that that forum, there were elected officials from Cuyahoga County there and from East Cleveland. And so the goal was really to make sure that resident concerns were being heard by decision makers and to really advocate to those policymakers to get something done in East Cleveland. So since then, um, we, we work closely with, with county council, particularly um, Cheryl Stevens. She's the elected representative of, of um, that neighborhood over in East Cleveland. And so far, we, um, we've begun to put together a framework for what steps to bring a grocery store to East Cleveland would look like. Um, and I think what's really nice about the framework is that it really prioritizes building leadership and, and ownership of this project among residents in East Cleveland um, so that residents will really be bought in. But also, you know, more importantly, residents will build the skills and the leadership to transform their city rather than, than this just being kind of like a one off project. Um, so, yeah, just to just briefly what, what that looks like is the first step is really training residents around what some of these economic deals, you know, might look like, how to manage a property. Um, and then two, it's doing um, kind of a, a market analysis of like, hey, where would it make the most sense to have a grocery store in East Cleveland? What's the income levels? Could we sustain a store here? Um, and then also like, you know, what wages could we pay workers, you know, at a location? And then lastly, trying to put together a financial support that would help to bring a grocery store into the community, but then also hold it accountable. You know, so if we're, bring, if we're giving public dollars to a grocery store, can we make sure that they're gonna pay a living wage? Can we make sure that they're going to have the type of goods and services that residents want? Um, so that's kind of where we are now, you know, with, with that project. And uh, I think that could actually be a really good opportunity for um, Fairmount Temple students to, to engage or to learn more or, or to really support that active um, campaign that's going on. Well, that's a, that's a great way to pause our conversation and resume uh, on Monday night. Um, so maybe if you want to push the, the students a little bit more, if there's any one thing that young people can either start thinking about or learning about or just being more conscientious of, um, where could a middle schooler start in trying to tackle these specific issues for entire communities that don't have a grocery store yet. Right, right. Well, one, I would just say that the pot, like youth, youth have a lot of power. Um, and it's oftentimes just, just kind of untapped or not, or not channeled, you know, channeled what, where it can be. Um, but I think the youth voice is, is very relevant. Um, and so, you know, concretely, I would maybe have a couple of recommendations. One, um, you know, uh, writing a letter uh, to your elected official. And, and in this case, I would, uh, and we can talk more about this, but I would recommend to your Cuyahoga County Council representative. And that letter could support the notion of, of really getting county gover government to support food justice issues and to support um, bringing a grocery store into the city of East Cleveland. Um, and so I do think that hearing from, from youth um, who are soon to be voters, but then also, you know, their parents, their families, uh, um, you know, y'all's communities are, are voting. That certainly has relevance to that elected official. So that's one thing, you know, write, writing letters. Um, I think too, you know, NOAA, they're, as I mentioned, they're a strong organization. They have monthly meetings. Um, I think if students were interested in, in attending you know, one of those meetings to, to learn more about what um, NOAA members, how they're working, what their issues are, um, but also to, to express solidarity. You know, I think if, if students, you know, believe this, it's always good to just be there and support. 
um, that, that could be a way to get involved. And then lastly, I think uh, um, something that could be really good is, you know, Cuyahoga County government, they have public meetings and we as residents have opportunities to speak at those meetings around issues that, that are important to us. Um, so that's something for, for students to think about, you know, would they be interested in attending a meeting and, and you know, presenting about why food deserts are, are near and dear, you know, to them. Um, because, you know, and that can help to push county council members to, to address this issue. Well, those are three great avenues to, to um, start getting the youth more interested uh, in this topic. And uh, I really appreciate how you're able to give a, um, a really clear way to take a small first bite because uh, sometimes we talk about problems that are so overwhelming and so big, it's hard to know where to start. So I think e even for adults, I think it's really nice to hear that uh, the really small steps um, in numbers do matter. Um, so I wanna thank you again for uh, graciously um, uh, offering some of your expertise and your experience um, and telling us, really educating us uh, beyond uh, what our curriculum uh, necessarily has in and of itself about this topic and, and making it really relevant for us here in the community. And um, I'm just, I just can't wait for the students to be able to meet you and maybe uh, continue the dialogue. Hey, uh, man, absolutely, Sam. Well, hey, this is great. It's my pleasure. And yeah, look, looking forward to meet, uh, meeting the students. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly a relevant, relevant issue for, you know, for, for our county. And then, yeah, we'll just also put out there, you know, definitely hear, you know, talk about careers, particularly public health stuff. And, you know, if any students are, have an interest in that too, down to, you know, share whatever information that might be useful there. Well, that's really generous of you. And there are a number of high school students as well who are in the, those juniors and senior years and trying to figure out what their interests and passions and uh, career choices may be. So um, perhaps there's a high schooler that may catch wind and, and get inspired to go into public health. So thanks hey, hey, so much I'm again, Roger. Um, okay. uh, we'll be in touch. Okay, Sam, that sounds good. Go. Oh. Okay. Racial justice, challenge.